Well, greetings everybody and welcome back to the Bond Geek channel with me, your host, the name's Stevens, Henry Stevens. Everybody, how do you do? I hope you're well. Hope you're enjoying a good Bond film, a good Bond book, a good Bond video game, a good James Bond, whatever makes you part of this glorious fandom, everybody, that is the James Bond community, everybody. Welcome. And I'm going to say something now that you might disagree with a lot, but it's something I really, really personally feel is a real issue at the moment in the Bond community, and I want to address it here on this channel. And it's simply this. I just don't think younger audiences are into Bond as much as they used to be anymore. Now, when I was younger, you know, the Brosnan films were always about in some form capacity. There was so much stuff, there was so much more things going on that sort of kept Bond in the younger mind and got him interested, him or sorry, or her and stuff. And nowadays, I, I think actually they for some reason, certainly with the Daniel Craig era, they've forgotten about trying to get the younger audiences into Bond and just are solely focused on us hardcore fans already and our fans that are in our sort of 30s and 40s. You know, it's going to come to a stage now where, you know, the box office and the films are going to suffer and the whole franchise will suffer because there's not enough younger people trying to get in to Bond like Marvel. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not trying to get Bond to compete with Marvel, everybody. You know, so I love my superheroes. I love my MCU. I love my DCEU. I love all of it, everybody. Bond is still my favourite. But if you look at those franchises, there's so much stuff just outside of the movies to get younger audiences still interested and keep them thinking about it. You know, when I was young, there was Bond games all the time there was, you know, the much more access to, like, you know, the toy model cars, like my toy SMR and DB5 I've got, and my Lotus Esprit. You know, I had so many others when I was younger. And there were so many other things going on and around that kept Bond interested and kept it in the minds of us fans, everybody. I did a little search now before I did this video, everybody. And I found, you know, for, for certainly younger kids, there is... Top Trump sets, Scare Electrics, and Funko Pops. That's really it. Everything else is much more designed for your 30 year old, okay? You know, you've got your champagne, which is great. You know, you've got the Plague of Dank, um, um, deck of cards and stuff. You know, it's all really great stuff. And quite frankly, if I could buy everything off the 007 store, I would, everybody. Believe me, I would. But I really wanted to now just go into this video and I wanted to share with you all my ideas about how we can get younger audiences more interested in Bond and get that new generation of Bond fans started, everybody. Now, the first thing I really want to bring up when it comes to this is an actor that kids know. I'm talking about your Henry Cavills and your Tom Hiddlestons, okay, everybody? I think the next Bond actor, whoever it will be, in whatever direction they go, I think you really need... An actor that people already know, like going, he was, I don't know, let's, let's just imagine Tom Hiddleston here for the moment, everybody. I think, you know, he was originally Loki in the MCU, now he's Bond, James Bond. And because they love him as Loki, they'll come over and more sort of follow Bond a lot more because they know it's Tom Hiddleston. Or, again, everybody, I bring up Henry Cavill. Um, you know, Henry Cavill, it's no lie, everybody, he is my personal favourite to take over from the franchise, everybody. And he has an amazing following. He's got Superman kids know him for. They know him from The Witcher, you know, basically, because kids are watching that. They know him from The Man from Uncle, Mission Impossible. They know him. And so when you have someone like that, I think young, the younger audience will go, well, I loved him in that. I'll go see him in that, everybody. I really, really do. And again, I'm trying to be fair. My own personal opinion here is that is the direction they need to go when it comes to the next Bond actor to, you know, bring the new young audiences and on that note to talk about the films and let's just keep it with the films here everybody you i think you need to do sort of villain plots that are really tackling issues i think that the younger generations are really interested in the most obvious one is global warming now i'm not trying to get into a sort of debate about is global warming happening or not i have my own opinion which is yes it is happening and we need to do stuff to try and stop it or prevent it as much as possible everybody you know, without the point of just going complete lunacy and destroying our lives to do it. You know, that's just my own personal opinion, okay? Take it as no one else's. But, you know, make the villains try to do stuff that is going to destroy the issues and the things that the more youthful audience care about, everybody. And that's just that's just one idea. There are t 
tons of ideas that you can do. One of the things I loved about No Time to Die is unintentionally it has really sort of struck, I think, a chord with the recent pandemic that's been going on. And I think it's made it all relevant. And I, uh, from what I've seen and heard, um, is people are more, res you know, the more younger audiences are responding to that a lot more. So, yeah, carry on that line, everybody. Carry on that line. The other things I think the films need to do as well, just going forward, is number one is I think we need to go back to something a bit more lighthearted than what Den of Craig Zero was. Now, don't get me wrong. I prefer the sort of Timothy Dalton, Sean Connery, Daniel Craig, James Bond films when it's more dark and more edgier with the fantastical twist. To me, that is Fleming. However, if you look at the big things like MCU, they do a lot more sort of light-hearted sort of tone, but they do tackle deeper sort of real dark issues. Look at Civil War for an example here, everybody. Civil War, Captain America Civil War is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. And I think the Bond series needs to go a bit more in the light-hearted direction a bit more. You know what, I'll put it as this. Look, I grew up with the Pierce Brosnan era. I think the Bond series needs to return to a bit more to the sort of Pierce Brosnan early era the golden eye and tomorrow never dies so yeah i'll go you know more side than wilson enough and die another day and the last thing i will just say about the series as well is the fact of actually is we're getting regular superhero movies on a regular basis we're getting regular horror films on a regular basis sci-fi movies on a regular basis everybody when Amazon does buy MGM, and I believe it will, and I still stand by, I think it will be one of the best things for the franchise, everybody. The films need to be regular every two to three years. With the Daniel Craig era, and to be fair, he's had, it's not their fault. They've had financial troubles, production troubles, you know, no time to die. We've had pandemic problems. But, you know, it's been six years since Spectre and then no time to die, everybody. You know, we're getting now, what, four Marvel films a year? I'm not saying that. But I do think we need to have a consistency every, should we say, three years we have a new Bond film. So the fan base builds. You know, it's building that new generation of the community. You know, they know every two or three years a next Bond film is going to come out and so on. It's what helps keep fans interested in knowing it's still happening, everybody. But outside of just the whole films here, everybody, I want to talk about things outside the franchise. I want to talk about merchandise. I want to talk about things to keep Bond alive in the imagination when the films aren't coming out or aren't on, everybody. And the number one thing I'm going to bring up right now is video games. Everybody, when I was a kid, I had GoldenEye 64, Tomorrow Never Dice World's Not Enough, but then Asian Under Fire, Night Fire, Everything or Nothing, GoldenEye Rogue Agent from Rush With Love, and I'll go with Quantum of Solace, really, as the sort of end of my youthful James Bond gaming, everybody. Yes, there was, you know, the video games kept the franchise alive in the minds of the youthful generation bef before Daniel Craig took on the role, everybody. So when I think Sing Around came out, I really do believe, hand on heart, one of the reasons that film was a success, apart from being just massively brilliant, don't get me wrong, is people still had James Bond in their minds. You know, the young still had it in their mind. Like, we've been playing these video games. There's a new James Bond, new James Bond film going out. We'll go see it. Helped just keep it going, everybody. And we are getting a new James Bond game, I know, from the Hitman creators. And I can't wait for that, by the way, everybody. But I'm sorry. I really want to see Eon go, right, we need to keep the James Bond series going, alive when the films aren't in development. We need more video games. The past with EA showed that you could do video games either based on old films in the franchise or complete new original stories and keep it going and keep it going heck make them like call of duty that you can just churn out every year with new locations and settings and stuff i'll be fine with that just keep the video games going because you know youthful generation including my you know i, I i'm not really youthful generation myself i'm nearly 30 everybody but they're playing games on their mobiles everybody they're still playing games on the playstation and xbox so Get James Bond back on there and keep it going. Another thing that I think is an absolute must when it comes to the Bond franchise going forward is to have spin-off shows on Amazon Prime. I really, really do, everybody. Again, a bit like the video games, it keeps the 
mindset on Bond alive and stuff that's going on with it. And, you know, none of it has to be theatrical experience, everybody. It can all just be shows on Amazon or, like, little movies on Amazon. But to keep it going, everybody. You could do an adaptation of the Young Bond series from Charlie Higson's novels, which were terrific, everybody. You could do a Felix Leiter TV show that everyone seems to like. That would be the obvious one to do. It can all just be Amazon Prime. Quite frankly, if you take the elements of Jack Ryan TV show and give it now to the character Felix Leiter, you could have something great. Do you want know something I would like to see in the franchise? And sorry, just for the record, this is slightly spoilerish, everybody. But I don't, you know, it's been out of the news so much now, I don't really count it. But you know, Lasana Lynch, um, as character in Naomi, she was the new 007 in No Time to Die. Do a Hobbs and Shaw movie of Lasana Lynch as Naomi and Pol uh, Polymer from No Time to Die. Have those two ladies team up to go tackle someone. I think that would be brilliant. In fact, I think that really would be brilliant. The Hobbs and Shaw of the Bond franchise. I'd really love that idea, sorry everybody. That was literally just right off the bat right there. I think that would be brilliant. But, you know, you can do so much stuff in the Bond franchise. And, again, I say this again. Keep the Bond films, the theatrical experience, the big events in the franchise. Just do these little things on Amazon Prime that just help keep it in, in the mind, everybody. I think that would just be really, really great. And the other thing that I really, really want the Bond franchise to do going forward, everybody, is toy sets. I'm sorry, I think it's crazy that, you know, when I was a kid, I couldn't have a volcano lair to sort of do my sort of news in my imagination, my stories creating when I was a kid when I was playing with toys, everybody. No, that would be great. You know, a toy version of Atlantis, toy version of, like, the locations in Goldeneye, everybody. Quite frankly, the fact is, yes, I know kids are more playing digital stuff at the moment, and you can make some, you say, I've talked about that with video games, but actually make some toy sets to go with um, the James Bond franchise. I mean, quite frankly, I, I talk about kids buying, you know, for the, you know, the parents buying the kids, you know, the volcano set or something. P grown ups will buy that. Grown ups will buy if there was like toy sets of James Bond, they would buy it. I, you know, again, it keeps the imagination and bond in the conscious mind, everybody. And I think the last thing I really want to bring up with it is, we, you know, there's a whole thing about getting younger people to read and stuff, which I'm all for. I all think it's a very important thing. We need to get kids to read the novels. You know, you know, I understand, you know, the novels are more for adults, everybody. But the fact of the matter is, I started reading them when I was 13. Um, I see no reason why other, you know, kids can't just... Get them to read the novels, everybody. We need to get more young people to get, you know, introduce them to the novels just as much, everybody. And that's just a whole thing on reading yourself. So, everybody, that's really my sort of little thing about how I think we need to get, how we can get younger audiences into the world of James Bond and interested in being, you know, fans growing up with it as well, everybody. Well, I want to know, what is your opinion? And I really, really want to know this, everybody. What are your ideas to help get younger audiences into James Bond. I really want to know. Comment down below. Really would love to hear your thoughts, everybody. Don't forget to like and comment and subscribe to the channel, everybody. Because remember, as well as these editorials, we got top 10 videos, reviews, what if else world scenarios, trailer reactions. If you're a Bond fan, we've got something for you here, everybody. As always, everybody, my name's Henry Stevens, and this has been The Bond Geek. Goodbye. <laughs>